Good morning, and welcome to this service of worship. For those of you who haven't met me, my name is Louise Robson. I'm a retired minister from Unity, and I have been here before. I uh, baptized Ember one, the last time I was here. And cute thing, this morning I was doing the Wordle puzzle, and spoiler alert, the answer was Ember. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, welcome to all of you. This is a special, special day, and I'm glad to have you here. And I hope and pray that you will feel the Spirit of God in our midst as we celebrate with worship and with the sacrament of baptism. I have a note here that the, we have birthday wishes from the past week for Richard Anderson and Ashton Kisnick, Kissick. And condolences to the Lil Singer family and to Mike Forsythe family. So these will be folks that you know that you should hold in your hearts and your prayers. Are there other announcements that should be made here this morning? If not, then uh, you will notice the prayer focus there at the top inviting us to keep Richard and Vicki in your prayers today and throughout the week. Let's take a moment to breathe deep and relax into the presence of God, preparing our hearts and minds for worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We gather this morning as family and friends to celebrate our faith, to be together in worship, and to praise God for the triumph of life over death, the triumph of love. Thanks be to God for grace, power, guidance, and love. And let's approach God in prayer. God, be in our midst this morning as we pray and sing together, and as we join in the sacrament of baptism. Be in our hearts and minds and voices. Strengthen us for service and give us the courage to live out our faith. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And our opening hymn is number 345, Come, Children, Join to Sing.
now it's theme time and I see there aren't any children except Amber and oh we do have one little girl there yes yes so this morning I want to talk to you about something you've heard about before and that is love love is what binds us together with our family and our friends and our God and the whole world and love isn't just a feeling love is this powerful powerful force that goes everywhere that is everywhere but lasts a long long time and I want today to teach you one phrase that I've learned I believe that it comes from Gandhi I want you to hear this and repeat it and memorize it and take it with you when you go that's your homework for a day the phrase is when the power of love is greater than the love of power then we shall have peace so I want you to repeat it after me phrase by phrase when the power of love, the power of love is, greater than the love of power, is greater than the love of power then we shall have peace, then we shall have peace. okay let's say it again when the power of love is greater than the love of power then we shall have peace when the power of love is greater than the love of power then we shall have peace God knows we need to carry that with us in our hearts and minds in this time of great violence and turbulence in the world let us join now in our prayer of confession judge trusting that God will receive us and accept us and forgive us let us pray together God all too often we are weak and shy when it comes to following your commands or living out our faith or sharing our belief in you we ask for pardon for our lack of conviction and pray that you will forgive us and renew us send us out refreshed and armed with a love that is not reticent or fearful but which will shine through us all our days in all our ways amen know that when we acknowledge our failures and turn to God we will find in God acceptance and forgiveness and the strength to try again to live faithfully we are forgiven thanks be to God Shauna do we have a minute for mission story So for the month of January, uh, Mission and Service asked four different staff members to choose a mission story that was meaningful to them and to tell us a bit about why. And so this is a story that Lindsay Vatour, who is the Engagement and Stewardship Associate, uh, came up with. And it's called Preserving Culture Through Language Revitalization. When a language disappears, we aren't just losing words. The world is losing the stories, the culture, and the unique perspectives, and the ways of an entire people. The thought of someone pouring their heart into sharing stories and songs, and someday those expressions of humanity being unreadable, is deeply unsettling. The efforts of mission and service partners to preserve languages unites people in a common passion while rediscovering history. When a language is restored and revitalized, 
the knowledge, the perspective, and passion of that culture are restored alongside it. The language allows the essence of loved ones to dance in our memories and encourage our future. So that's just one way in which Mission and Service is helping those around Canada and around the world. Thank you, Shauna. The center piece of our service is always going to be reading from the scriptures. They are ancient texts, but they contain amazing wisdom and knowledge that we should share and remember. So I invite you to turn to page 861 in Voices United. Page 861, it's Psalm 139. And we will read it responsively. O oh God, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You discern my path and the places I rest. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it, O oh God, completely. You guard me from behind and before and lay your hand upon me. It is beyond my knowledge. It is a mystery. I cannot fathom it. Where can I escape from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I lie down in the grave, you are even there. If I take wing with the dawn and alight at the sea's farthest limits, there also your hand will be guiding me, your powerful hand holding me fast. If I say, let the darkness cover me and my day be turned to night, even darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. It was you who formed my inward parts. You fashioned me in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully, wonderfully made. Wondrous are your works, that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being fashioned in secret intricately woven in the mystery of clay. Your eyes saw my substance taking shape. In your book my every day was recorded. All my days were fashioned even before they came to be. How deep your designs are to me, O God! How great their number! I try to count them, but they are more than the sand. I come to the end, I am still with you. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. Watch closely, lest I follow a path of error, and guide me in the everlasting way. And now turning to um, Paul's letter to the Romans, and this passage I like to choose, it's titled The Marks of the True Christian. And I like to use this one because it's kind of the Christian gospel, the Christian lifestyle in a nutshell. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. 
Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. And turning to the Gospel of Matthew, the parable of the lost sheep. This is Jesus telling a story. Take care that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you, in heaven their angels continually see the face of my Father in heaven. What do you think? If a shepherd has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly, I tell you, he rejoices over it more than over the ninety-nine that never went astray. So it is. It is not the will of your Father in heaven that one of these little ones should ever be lost. May God bless to our understanding these readings from Holy Scripture, and to God's name be all praise and glory, now and forever. Amen. So we're here today for a very special service of baptism. Baptism is a tradition going farther back than we can know, unless we're archaeologists or anthropologists. Its origins are not completely known to me, but I know that long before Jesus said, baptize them in my name, Baptism was a part of the Jewish tradition as a cleansing ritual. Baptism has been there that long. It was preparation for coming before God in the temple or in prayer. It was required of women after they had their monthly flow, which was considered unclean. It was required if you were if you ever touched a dead body or butchered an animal. I don't know exactly how they all performed this ritual, the cleansing, whether they were immersed or just used a basin, but they had to do it often to feel that they were clean again and could return to the temple, or in the case of the woman, to her husband. When we baptize a baby, we use water on the forehead as a symbolic cleansing, declaring that the child is received and accepted by God and will know the grace of forgiveness. Some traditions involve full immersion, like in the Baptist church. Some others will bring water from the River Jordan to symbolically form an attachment to the place where Jesus was baptized. A ritual is an act that we perform regularly. Baptism is a ritual. It's in a pattern, often according to guidelines handed down by our elders and honed over time. A ritual is comfortable for us because we're used to how it's done. And there are no big changes in it from time to time. It includes familiar words and phrases which we find helpful in the challenging uh, uh, situations of life. Everybody has rituals. If you think about Christmas, for example, you have foods and decorations and articles of clothing which are used every year and are enjoyed and valued as part of your celebrations, trying memories of the past to the present, warming your heart, 
and flavoring the days. You have rituals to mark birthdays and anniversaries. You likely even have morning and evening rituals, familiar patterns that help you feel grounded and at home. Baptism is a ritual that welcomes a baby into our midst and reminds us of the promises God has made to us and we have made to God. Baptism is a sacrament, a ritual that is an outward and visible sign of an inward and invisible grace. In the Roman Catholic Church, they recognize seven sacraments. In the United Church, we celebrate only two, communion and baptism. We don't call marriage or ordination sacraments as the Roman Catholics do. I will also note that the common thread between the churches of the world is an accepted form and words for these sacraments. And that's why the United Church of Canada agrees that we should all use the same words in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. In saying that, we are in unity with all Christians around the world. And we don't call baptism christening, usually. Christening is a naming ritual done slightly different than the baptisms in some churches. There are non-religious christenings too, such as the christening of a ship, where they break a bottle of champagne over the prow. That's not a sacrament, it's just a naming ritual. We believe the sacrament is a channel for the grace of God. The Holy Spirit is active through it. I believe this, and I love presiding at baptism for that reason. It is a time of hope and joy and trust and acceptance. A number of years ago, I baptized a little fellow who was five years old. And he was a bit of a bad actor, and I was afraid what might go on on Sunday morning. But Sunday morning, he came to church dressed in a suit, and he was as solemn and sober and reverent as anybody ever could be. And the baptism went beautifully and afterward, at the lunch, he loudly informed his family, now I can talk to God any time I want. <laughs> and I thought, there, there's power in what we do here. Years ago, I read a story about a minister in a downtown church in a large city, in a seedier part of the city, like east side Vancouver. He befriended a young couple who came for, to him for marriage. He was dubious because they weren't stable, they weren't settled, they had addictions and so on. But as an act of faith, he married them and they had a baby. They brought the baby for baptism. Again, he was dubious about their stability and their intentions. But as an act of faith and hope and acceptance, he baptized the child. Years later, having lost track of the couple, he began to notice a little girl hanging around the church sometimes. She would be in the parking lot or by the front door, watching people come and go. She looked lost, like she was looking for something. Finally, one day, the minister spoke to her asked her her name. When she told him, he was taken aback. He said, I remember you. I knew your parents. I baptized you. She looked at him in wonder. I'm baptized, she said. He nodded. Her bearing changed. Her face changed. She no longer looked lost. He reached out to her. Come on in, he said. The grace of God was rampant in that moment. Baptism is part of a ceremony. A ceremony is a public or religious celebration of a special occasion. 
It involves ritual, to be sure, and is focused on an achievement, a promotion, or naming, like a coronation or awarding medals at the Olympics. A service is what we call our regular Sunday worship. It includes all of the above meanings, ritual, sacrament, and ceremony. What we call communion, the Catholics call Eucharist or Mass. We have much in common with the other churches in our services. We read scripture, pray, sing, and greet each other in Christian love. I have attended Christian services in so many places, Mexico, Germany, Italy, and they all gave me the same sense of belonging, being part of a huge faith family. In Paris, in France, I attended the American Church in Paris. The service was in English, mostly kind of Presbyterian, which is very like our United Church, and it felt very familiar. But the minister had a most interesting accent, and though I was familiar with all the words, I kept listening to see where is this fellow from. Turns out he had been raised and educated in Australia, and then moved to Boston, and now lived in Paris. So no wonder he had all these different cultures and accents in his voice. But you see, the Christian faith is that universal. You can travel anywhere around the globe and join a Christian community. In Germany, I wandered into a Lutheran church and there was a big room divider standing up at the front at the side of the church with pictures of children and other members of the congregation on it, just exactly like we do in our church. I thought, oh my Jesus, you did start a very big movement for love and inclusion. Do you see how big it is, how universal? I love that. And that's why in the baptism certificate, the child is welcomed into the Holy Catholic Church, not Roman Catholic, but the universal church of followers of Jesus. Baptism is a rite of passage. In the Jewish tradition, they have bar mitzvah, where the boy turns 12 or 13, whereas a girl's rite of passage is called bat mitzvah. It marks the onset of adulthood and requires of the boy or girl that they demonstrate a knowledge of their faith and tradition. Again, it involves scripture, prayer, and song. In our church, we have confirmation, where we ask young folks or adults to profess their faith and express a desire to be active participants in the life of the church. So today, what we do here is deeply rooted in history, in our culture, and in our faith tradition. It is ritual, tradition, and sacrament, and it celebrates our growing faith in God, new life in our midst, a triumph of life and love and hope. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now I invite Dylan, Chelsea, and Sadie to come forward. I told her she wouldn't cry. <laughs> I present to you this family, Dylan, Chelsea, and their daughter Sadie, 
who have come to us for baptism into the membership of the Christian Church. Jesus said, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. In truth, I tell you, anyone who does not welcome the kingdom of God like a little child will not enter it. And Jesus gave this command, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always to the close of the age. In baptism, we celebrate God's love. We acknowledge that God first loved us, a love revealed in creation, a love which surrounds all children from their birth. In baptism, we proclaim that God has acted to accept children and to adopt them as members of Christ's church and the Christian community. In baptism, we dedicate children to God's purposes, knowing that even though we may falter, God will not, that God will continue through the Spirit, the work begun this day, a work in which life triumphs over death. In that a child cannot understand this at this time, the parents and the church promise to bring children up in the Christian faith so that they have every opportunity to confirm their baptism by choosing for themselves to follow Jesus. Dylan and Chelsea, you are presenting your child for baptism so she may be made a member of the church. I ask you before God and this congregation, do you believe in God's love and God's presence in your lives? We do. Do you believe in the teachings of Jesus, love, acceptance, and forgiveness? Do you believe that God is present to help you in your need for guidance, strength, and courage? Will you do your best to provide a Christian home for your child? And will you live in a way that guides her to come to know the greatness of God's love? Will the congregation please stand? Friends, we are receiving this child as we have been received and welcome her into the fellowship of the Christian church. It is your duty to support this family with constant love, wholesome example, Christian teaching and faithful prayer. In the unity of Christ, are you willing to accept this responsibility? We, we are, are willing, willing. God, God being our own. You may be seated. May God's grace be in these waters of daily use, which we now use to bless and to welcome. Baby, come see me. You're going to come see me. Beautiful girl. Sadie Ann, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May God bless you and keep you. May the love of Christ and all of us here surround you forever. And may the Spirit give you joy and peace. Amen. Child of God, we welcome you. <laughs> this is Sadie Ann. Hi. Welcome. Hi. Welcome. Hi. This is Sadie Ann. Sadie. She's a new member in our church. This is Sadie. You got baptized too, didn't you? Now it's Sadie's turn. <laughs> there you go. You say hi to Sadie. <laughs> say hi to Sadie. 
Here is the baptism candle, and I understand Daddy has his own from the time he was baptized here. And there is her certificate. So, welcome and thank you. Yeah. Ah, this, oh yes, this goes with as a gift from the congregation. They're perfect stories for little ones. There you go. I told you she wouldn't cry. <laughs> Let's sing together hymn number 444, Child of Blessing, Child of Promise. Offering, Sandra, how does that happen? Okay. Let us pray. Gracious God, as you have showered us with blessings, now we return thanks to you in the way of this offering, asking that you bless and multiply it by your grace, that it may be used by this congregation and the wider church to spread the love of Christ and the peace of Christ where it is so desperately needed. We pray these in Jesus' name. Amen.
Are there joys and concerns, or was that in the announcements? I think that was it. That was it. Okay, I thank you. Have one more joy. Yeah? Lots of you are, haven't been able to join us, but what a joy having Shauna playing at the piano organ <laughs> for us again. Usually we have our music on an iPod, and I think this is just so beautiful, so thank you, Shauna. Yes, thank you, Shauna. Good. You must forgive all mistakes. <laughs> Well, you've heard me mention forgiveness quite a few times here today. <laughs> so it is indeed a blessing and a joy to have you. So let us turn to God now with our prayers of thanksgiving for all that we have received and also to come to God with our concerns for ourselves and others who need our prayers. Let us pray. Gracious God, on this lovely mild winter morning, we give you thanks that we are able to be here, that we are safe and fed and warm, that we are together in love, that we are able to celebrate with joy these new little ones in our presence. We pray for Dylan and Chelsea and all their family that Sadie will grow up safe and secure and full of gratitude for the blessings she receives from you. We thank you for this church community, for this peaceable little town, for the beauty of the prairies, and for our opportunities and our hope for the future. And God, we come to you today with concerns too, for there is pain in our heart, and we do face challenges. We pray for those who are poor, who are weak and tired, for those who are unemployed and frightened. We pray for the strength to reach out to those in need, to give what we have of our time, our talents, and our resources. To help, for that is why you have led us to this place and this time. You teach us to reach out in love to one another. And so we pray for those who are bereaved. We pray for the little Singer family and the Mike Forsyth family. And we pray that as they gather together, there will be strength and unity among them. We pray for your blessing and your grace on those who are ill, those who are recovering, those who are waiting for tests, for that is a difficult, challenging time. And God, all these prayers we wrap up in one as we pray together in the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our final hymn today is number 658. 658, O oh love that wilt not let me go.
now go in peace, empowered and emboldened by the love of God, nurtured and inspired by the Holy Spirit, and following the light of Christ, become all that you were meant to be. Amen. Go in peace. Thank mm-hmm. you.